Today we're going to look at the HP EliteBook. It's the Folio 1040 model, and I've been playing with this one for nearly a month now, and I feel like it's finally ready to show up on the YouTube channel. I've really had a good amount of time to kind of beat the tires with this thing, and in fact, my wife, uh, Jennifer, has also spent a considerable amount of time playing with this laptop. So first off, I love this laptop. This is a really nice piece of kit that came from HP. They just asked me to review it and see what I thought about it, and I provided feedback, and then I thought, you know what, I really like this thing, so I wanted to kind of tell everyone else about what I found was really cool about the experience. So first off, it's super thin. Uh, it, it's like 0.6 inches, I believe, thick, something like that. It's, it's super, super thin and really, really light. So it's about three-ish pounds. But what I really like about it, thin, small. In fact, I've traveled on the plane a lot. And when I'm on the plane, let me see if I can get a pretty good view of this. The amount of space that it takes up to open is very minimal. So it's, it's not very large, but you still get a 1080p display. So normally what happens is this. If you have a seat right about here where my hand is that you're bumping up against, you're fine. And as soon as they lay back or something, it kind of pushes your laptop and then you're trying to see what goes on. And if you have a large laptop, the width of it alone may be beyond what your seat can handle. So if you've got the little tray, it's just, you're out of luck. So this thing fits perfectly from a width perspective. And I found that even with someone laying back, the screen will be right about here. Otherwise I can get it to about here as long as they're not leaning back. So it's really handy for travel, especially because I have found I can get about six hours of use out of it. And living in Chicago, it's very hard to find something that's six hours away uh, domestic. So pretty much everything is within six hours. If I have an international flight, then I may want to use it a little sparingly uh, because lots of places are more than six hours away international. So let me go back to the laptop real quick. On the one side, we've got plenty of little adapters. We've got USB. We've got, oh, actually, let me put my finger on the area. Uh, so right here, we have the connection for this guy which allows you to do the VGA and Ethernet port. So you just kind of, kind of snug that in there and then there's your dongle so that you have a VGA and network in case you don't want to use just wireless. And I believe it just pops out. Yep, there's nothing you have to do that's special with that. Uh, you also have a display port right here. You have a USB and you have headphones. So that's this side over here, uh, as well as power right there. I almost forgot about that bad boy. And then the other side, it's a little simpler. You've got the USB right here, and there's a fan exhaust right here. Uh, so if you look right there, there is also the mini SD port right here, and then the large SD card port right here. So you've got a lot of different things that you can do with it, except natively you can't do Ethernet or VGA without hooking in the little dongle connector, which it comes with, so no big deal. So lots of cool connectivity. I like the finish. People don't confuse it with a Mac because I have a Spectre XT, looks very Power Mac looking, which isn't a bad thing necessarily. It's a cool design, but this has a little more of a unique design. Logos right in the middle looks nice. So let me pop it open real quick. We'll go over some of the other features that I like. First off, very minimal. You know, you got the keyboard that goes across. You've got the sound bar going across here. You've got the mute, basically the audio function and the airplane mode function right there power and that's it. So it's not all buttony uh, and there's actually a fingerprint reader. I'll put it up a little bit differently here. Fingerprint reader right there. So you can just swipe your finger to get it to power on. And then this really nice touchpad. So this touchpad is pretty unique because when you're using it, you can just use one finger for just about everything. So if you have one finger on there lightly, that's different than if you have one pressed a little harder. And in fact, just varying your pressure with it can change between clicking and dragging. So you can kind of click on something and then press a little harder and drag it around and instead of having to do the two finger, you know, I'm going to use, usually you do one finger to grab it and then the other finger to move it. You don't have to do that. So a lot of this can be done with just one hand, which is really nice. Uh, like I said a little earlier, it is 1080p, which I think is pretty much default with laptops today. They should be that. I'm never going to own a laptop again that isn't at least 1080p, which is 1920 by 1080 resolution. Because frankly, this isn't the largest laptop in the world and having a screen this size that doesn't have a resolution of 1080p or greater, it's a waste of my time. So great job, like that that's in there. It had a few other stickers on here. I kind of got rid of those because I don't like having stickers on there. The only one I left was the fact that it has an Intel i5 inside. I'm gonna link to a post that I published a while ago 
It contains all the specs of the stuff that's in here. There's a few choices you have, but I don't really want to dive into cores and processors and memory in a video. It seems kind of boring. The other thing that I really like about it is when the laptop is on, so I'll just power it on real quick right here. It is completely noiseless, makes no noise whatsoever, and really I've not found it to generate any heat either. So that's cool. Even under load, you'll find that my wife Jennifer, she does video editing and things like that. She found that it was plugged in because she was doing a lot of video editing. And there's the very loud sound. I'm going to mute that. Uh, it doesn't actually create a lot of heat or and really any heat or noise, which is awesome. So it's not, uh, it doesn't get a huge fan noise or anything like that. But you'll see the keys get some backlight to them, which is kind of nice. And they'll fade away when you're not using the laptop much. So you'll see the backlight kind of brighten when you press a key. Now that I pressed a key, it kind of lightens up a little bit more. It's harder to get on the video. Whereas these lights kind of always stay on. So it's really power conscious. Uh, by default, I think if you don't touch it for a little bit, it dims the screen to 50% and then I think it sleeps after 15 minutes or so. And I just have Windows 7 on here. I haven't explored with Windows 8 yet, but it's pretty cool. And in fact, I can show you here. If I can get my finger around, I can swipe my finger and there we go, we're logged in. It's really nice. In fact, I've recorded uh, my two fingers, so if you're one of those crim criminal guys out there, uh, please don't snip off one of my fingers to get in this laptop. There's nothing worth stealing my finger for. I always have a thing after seeing Demolition Man about having a finger or eyeball ripped off. <laughs> but anyway, so I, I got both my fingers on there and both my wife's fingers on there, so we can use either finger to get logged in the laptop. You don't have to worry about names or passwords or anything, which is pretty cool. And then once you're on there, you can start using the touchpad. You know, you're ready to go. And in fact, if I turn the audio on, and hopefully you can get the sound in here. Uh, if I hold, the, if I just drag around, nothing happens noise-wise. But once I press harder, you can kind of get that. I'll get it up to my my thing here. So you get the audible click when you press harder. So that's the two phases of the pressure on there. So you can drag kind of softly. You can press down, and it makes like a clicking noise because there's no left or right click on here. It's just one kind of mat pad. That's pretty much up. You saw it boot up really quickly because it's all solid state. Uh, even though it's Windows 7 and not Windows 8, which I have to change at some point. Uh, as far as getting everything shut down, it works pretty quickly on that aspect too. So I'll just go to shutdown, and you'll see it powers off really quickly. So it's, it's quite speedy, power on, power off. I don't even bother to hibernate or sleep. I just do a full power off and on because it's Windows and it likes stuff like that. So there we go. It's now ready to close up and go along its way. Hope you've enjoyed this review of HP's really awesome Elite Book Folio 1040. Don't miss out on my future videos. Become a YouTube subscriber today. Do you crave more content on home labs, technical certifications, deep dives, product reviews, and geeky shenanigans? Wall Network is also available in blog format at wallnetwork.com.